Hi, I'm Eric Emmerich, and welcome to Boiler Bites, the only show that gives you an inside glimpse at what's happening on the Purdue campus. For more than 60 years, he's been a welcoming face for Boilermaker alumni and fans. From sports apparel to sporting events, we look back on the amazing history of Purdue University's beloved unofficial mascot, Purdue Pete. I did happen to be in an airport one time and coming back from a meeting. It was in the fall and a football game was on and the guy was pushing his way through this bunch of us who were watching the game. And he said, I have, Ohio State was playing. Somebody said, I have to watch the Buckeyes. I was Brutus Buckeye. And I said, well, don't push. I was Purdue Pete and I'll push you back. I really feel that Purdue Pete is that branch um, from not just athletics, but from the university to our fans. There's just an aura about being Purdue Pete. I mean, very few get that opportunity. Running out there and seeing all those Purdue alumni that come back or all the Purdue fans that are there, you know, they see you, they're happy to see you. It was, it was a lot of fun. If I was going to an appearance somewhere on campus, I would just get dressed in my apartment and walk across campus. It was just kind of fun, just, hey, there's Pete just walking across campus. What's up, man? <laughs> Adored by generations of Purdue fans and alums, Boilermaker Pete has roamed the sidelines for more than 60 years. But this unofficial university mascot didn't start out life in a costume. Nicknamed the Boilermakers as a nod to the school's practical, industrial-style learning, Purdue's official mascot has long been a Victorian-era locomotive, affectionately called the Boilermaker Special. But what about Pete? The origin of Purdue Pete can be traced to a local campus bookstore, University Bookstore, founded in 1939 by owners Red Sammons and Doc Ebel. In the early 40s, uh, a company, Angelus Decal, that was working around the country trying to get colleges to come up with something, and this was really before branding or licensing. Art Evans was the, uh, the artist who worked for Angelus Decal, and they had gone to the university stores at other campuses and created logos and so they came to Purdue to develop this uh, caricature that they were going to put on notebooks to sell notebooks. Well it was a very popular item. Arthur Evans design is a powerful homage to Boilermaker craftsmen. Sporting a muscular physique, hard hat, and a mallet for hammering steel, this iconic logo was intended to signify strength and determination. In addition, Evans submitted an entire portfolio of Pete drawings, each representing a different major at Purdue. Then people would come in and ask who he was. Well, they had never named him, and uh, Doc Apple, he just said Pete. I mean, it could have been Purdue Phil or Paul, but he always liked the name Pete, so that's how Pete got his name. Four years after his bookstore debut, the Pete logo featured prominently in the university's official 1944 yearbook but it would be another 12 years before the character emerged in human form. Mechanical engineering student Larry Brumbaugh was the first to wear the foamed padded Pete costume at a pep rally in September of 1956. From that moment on, Purdue Pete became a staple at home football games, and by 1958, undergraduate John Note had assumed the role. At that time, we only did uh, football games. I was asked uh, to do a basketball game in the old Lambert Fieldhouse, and it was so hot that I told them at halftime I didn't care to continue because the head was paper mache and plaster of Paris. It weighed 36 pounds. And this was the original head. It's the only one, by the way, that hasn't been preserved. It uh, supposedly fell off a truck or disintegrated for some reason. But the other interesting thing over the period of time is one day in the middle of the fall, I got a message that I was supposed to appear in, in uh, Director Mackey's office. So I went in and he said, son, I, I watch you on the field and I have the same reaction that you have to the officials, but you can't beat the hammer on the ground when there's a bad officials call. When Pete's head went missing after a road game in 1962, an even larger paper mache model was designed. By 1976, Purdue Athletic Gear sported an updated Pete design. Created by campus artist Keith Butts, these new logos aimed to present a fierce, more competitive, tough-minded Purdue Pete to the world. As for the costume itself, Pete's head underwent its own series of revisions in the 1970s. It was really a cavernous thing you had to lift up, and that was that first year, uh, my sophomore year in 1978-79. Uh, it was a 47-pound pound fiberglass head that mostly was sort of cavernous above you, and then it had a fiberglass front 
and the same on the back with the sides open. The visibility was through the mouth. And my junior year, so the fall of 79, uh, they went from that happy but rather dumb, go-lucky look to a smaller, more mobile head. It was a very mean look. I mean, it was a big jaw, a sh five o'clock shadow, the frown. And um, un unbeknownst to them, but known to us, is that it just, it just scared the heck out of kids. And then I think they transitioned to what I think mostly they have today. So they've got it right. They've gotten it right. They, they used to be able to talk in the suit, and now that's like a big no-no for us. So it's just, it's just really cool to see how Pete's changed over the years. In 2011, Purdue Athletics briefly experimented with a full-body costume makeover, but quickly abandoned the idea at the urging of diehard fans. Today, six students fill the role of Pete, and the heads are manufactured in a composite lab by Purdue's aviation technology students. Molded from a master plug, each fiberglass head is custom fitted for its wearer. We all have our own individual heads, we all have our own individual eye colors. In terms of the body, we actually wear hockey pads, um, the chest and shoulder pads, and we put a long black sleeve shirt over that, and then we put on whatever uniform or whatever event that we're going to relate best with that. You're exhausting yourself, you're sucking wind, and it's just hot air that, that's the odor of Pete. Um, but at the same time, when you put on the head, it's, it's a rush. Once you have it on, you don't really think of it. It's a bike helmet strapped inside of that, and, and the, you get such a such an energy boost from, from the crowd, whether it was at ross Aid Stadium or at Mackey Arena. So uh, we were always fine. So... How exactly does an undergraduate student become Purdue Pete? Yeah, I'm the coordinator of the whole spirit squad, which involves uh, cheerleaders and Purdue Pete. At tryouts, there's different stations that they have to do. Dancing, uh, props, where they have to put together a skit, um, game day situations, things like that. Being one of the rare mascots where their arms and legs are being shown, you know, they do have to be in uh, pretty good physical shape. Then we have kind of a mentoring program for about at least four to six weeks. Uh, they're partnered up with one of the older guys and they go to events with them, they go to games with them, and they kind of just watch them and then critique each other. And once we feel they're ready, uh, we'll, we'll put them out there at an event or a game and you'll see them get better and more comfortable. I ended up trying out and I got it and I texted my mom and she called me immediately. She's going, no way, like, that's so crazy. You're the mascot, that's so weird. She's like, I'm so proud of you, that's awesome. We have study tables throughout the week. We have our conditioning on top of our meetings with our coaches. So there has to be an element of professionalism, but at the same time, you have to go out and have a lot of fun. Ben or me and, and Sue, we'd be up more in the crowd interacting with fans or interacting with little kids. Kevin's a good dancer, he's a great dancer, and you know, is more of like the hype Pete. I do love to dance, so uh, I, I like to make that my signature is dancing. I was a huge fan of Coach Katie growing up, and I got to be Purdue Pete on the court for his last game in, in 2005 at Mackey Arena. You know, and the way that he would react to things, that's, that's kind of the style that I used. <laughs> so just the big fist pumps and uh, that everybody brings their own individuality to, to the, the character of Purdue Pete. My sophomore year, the reason in part they went with two Purdue Pete's was that Title IX was coming in. Required events included women's volleyball and women's basketball, which we loved. And we were encouraged to try to get to two of every other event. So two men's swimming, two women's swimming. They really wanted us out. We're at you know softball games, we're at baseball games. We do events around campus for the Purdue, Purdue Alumni Association. From birthday parties to weddings to going to home hospital over in Lafayette. So there was a variety of things that Purdue Pete does outside of just athletics. Kindergarten is at Woodland Elementary School. Got a special visit today. Purdue Pete himself made an appearance and took the kids on a scavenger hunt. It was all a complete surprise to the kids. In October 2016, more than 30 former Purdue Peets reunited for the 60th anniversary of Pete's first costumed appearance. There's a loose but common bond among those who have been Purdue Peets. You know, nobody else has done that, and you, you're just glad that you could have been of service to your university in some way. 
And I think we all felt that. It was awesome to see a lot of the prior, and by prior, I mean prior, when Pete was you know, just originally found. And then it was good to catch up with the guys who recently graduated. We got to meet guys that did it in the 80s or the 70s. They're like Dr. No. The first Pete is deceased, and his son and his wife and daughter came. I got to meet them and getting to know some of the other Pete's. That is uh, interesting to know what they do and where they are and that sort of thing. It's a great group of guys that, that love this university. And I know every single one that's been Purdue Pete since, since I've done it. And I would do anything for those guys. But it was just a big campfire, camp, campfire story uh, telling session. Most of the stories we tell, I mean, like, I probably shouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're a big target <laughs> when, you're, when you're Purdue Pete. And uh, that, that goes for any mascot. The opposing, the, the way games were always interesting, particularly with a 47 pound head, because you had a big target. So apples or oranges were not infrequent. I got, I got hot dogs thrown at me. I got other food thrown at me. Probably the most uh, in interesting story occurred at Wisconsin when their guy, uh, Bucky Badger, came over and stole the hammer. And I uh, uh, started running after him and tackled him in the end zone and the head rolled off over toward the goalpost. And the next day, one of the Madison papers, uh, the paper said the, the most interesting tackle of the day was when Purdue Pete lost his head tackling Bucky Badger in the end zone. I, I do remember the Northwestern game in 2006. The year before, Willie the Wildcat had taken our big gold Purdue flag and he, uh, he brought it back to his sideline. The following year up at Evanston, he took, he did it again <laughs> and I went and <laughs> just tackled him as he was carrying my flag and, and uh, picked my flag back up and just walked back to my spot. Um, and we didn't plan that, that just kind of happened. So I apologize to Willie if you're watching this. <laughs> the story that is favorite among fellow Purdue Peets is, is, uh, is the time I, I probably lost a little control and that was, um, it was a home game, it was cold, it was rainy, we were supposed to win and we didn't. So I'm traipsing back pretty soggy uh, to the fraternity house, and uh, somebody just rang my chime. That was with the big 47 pound head. And they ran past me, which is oftentimes the thing they do, and they slowed. And lo and behold, it was a fellow Boilermaker. Well, I can take opposition doing apples and oranges or ringing your chime with their hand, but your own Boilermaker. So I end up going after him. I, I tackled him on his front lawn. I'm not sure I got any licks in with this, but maybe with some other parts. And uh, uh, he looked up and he saw, you know, this gargantuan head and maybe the mallet right in his face. So I'm not too proud of it, but it was a fun day because uh, fellow boilers should not do that to Purdue Pete. So I hope I won. I will say I had a very positive experience at Nebraska. Um, they were the nicest fans I've ever met. They're like, oh, Pete, let me get, let me get your picture. Uh, welcome to Lincoln, H hope you come back. Every kid loves Purdue Pete, and uh, the alumni come back, and it's that's what they remember. It is really amazes me how much our fans love him, and how much they really just want to get a picture with him, or just get a high five from him. There are always kids, and that's why you're there. You are there to celebrate Purdue University, and so any lift you can give to a young child, thinking that maybe, maybe this will be the turning point that gets them ignited for Purdue, gosh, what an honor, you know? Driving around tailgates, and there's just, a, he's, you know, there's just a kid all by himself with his football, and Pete goes up to him and tosses him a football. It'll make their day. It was so much fun for me being behind the mask to, to see the, the way the little little ones reacted to Purdue Pete. There's this little girl that comes up to me every single like women's basketball game. I've had like seven this year, and she's always like. I'm your number one fan, Purdue Pete, like, and always gives me a hug and says I love you, and I'm just like, that's the coolest thing ever, like, that you can impact someone like that so much. That wraps up another Boiler Bites. Be sure to check us out online at BoilerBites.com. See you next time.